After much anticipation, President Trump announced his pick to fill the empty spot on the Supreme Court. I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. If confirmed, Judge Kavanaugh is expected to side with the conservative agenda more often than Anthony Kennedy, the justice he would succeed. A more conservative justice in that seat could result in rulings against same-sex marriage, against affirmative action, against abortion rights. But the court's next term starts in October, and none of the cases it has agreed to hear so far involve those issues. However, other important matters are already on the docket. Here are three key issues that the court will weigh in on next. First, the Supreme Court has agreed to hear a case involving what's known as double jeopardy. At the heart of the issue is whether or not a person can be put on trial twice for the same crime. The Fifth Amendment states that no person may be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, which some interpret to mean that nobody can be tried twice for a single offense. But the court has long held that there's an exception. If somebody in a single act breaks both state and federal law, he or she can be tried in both state and federal court. In the case the Supreme Court will look at, a convicted felon in Alabama was caught in possession of a firearm, and he was sentenced twice. The state gave him one year in prison, the federal government gave him three. His lawyers say that double conviction violated the Fifth Amendment. Now the court will consider whether to rethink double jeopardy. The court will also hear a case that carries high stakes for Apple. In Apple vs. Pepper, the court will consider whether users can sue the tech giant for maintaining an exclusive marketplace for apps, or what most of us know as the App Store. The plaintiffs argue that Apple has created an anti-competitive monopoly that has pushed the prices of apps higher. That's because if you own an Apple device, you have to buy apps through the App Store, and Apple takes a 30% commission. The plaintiffs say this arrangement has incentivized developers to inflate their prices. Apple says the case lacks standing, and that consumers can't sue the company just because developers, who ultimately set the prices, charge more. Finally, there are a number of cases that involve class action lawsuits, and one of those cases has to do with what happens to settlement money. In some instances, when it's tough to dole out funds, the parties involved agree to give that settlement money to outside groups and charities. This happened recently in a settlement involving Google. Instead of distributing $8.5 million among 129 million people whose privacy was allegedly violated, and who would have only gotten a few cents each, a large chunk of the settlement was donated to six organizations promoting internet privacy. The problem, though, is that those organizations were seen as friendly to Google, so some argued that Google was essentially rewarded for bad behavior. Google has maintained that the arrangement was fair, but a conservative group argued that the practice forced plaintiffs, who were owed money, to support charities without their consent. So therefore, the practice violated their First Amendment rights.